Well, um, good evening, members. Uh, a number of us tonight are having technical issues, in including myself. Um, so apologies if this um, disrupts the smooth running of, of tonight's meeting. But welcome everybody to this meeting of the Housing and Regeneration Scrutiny Committee. And can I remind members uh, to keep microphones on mute and only unmute when they're going to make a contribution? Uh, that's with the exception of myself and Vice Chair Mike Adams. Can I also remind everybody that we will be using the hands up function tonight in order to uh, ask questions? And uh, finally, we're going to be using the Microsoft Forms meeting for agenda items numbers. Bear with me. Three, five, and seven, Chair. Five and seven, that was on the other screen. Thanks very much, Mike. OK. And for, uh, uh, well, actually, agenda item seven, I think I'm right in saying that we will be using um, a, a hand show, will we, Mark, tonight for that? That's correct, Chair. Yeah. OK, that's great. Thanks very much indeed. OK. So if I can start by uh, uh, reading the privacy statement and um, this meeting will be recorded and made available to view via the Council's website, except for discussions involving confidential and or exempt items. Therefore, the images and audio of those individuals speaking will be publicly available to all via the recording on the Council's website at www.kafili.gov.uk. And moving on to agenda item one, which is to receive apologies for absence. Um, are there any apologies, Mark, on the ones we've been notified about so far? Uh, no, Chair, just the three apologies from Councillor um, Robert Goff, um, Councillor Gaynor Oliver and Councillor Margaret Sargent. Three apologies. OK, fine. Can I include to that Andrew, Councillor Andrew Whitcomb, who would have been attending tonight, but um, he, he gave me a call and um, he has something else which has cropped up and he, and he cannot do that. So if I can just put that on the list, thanks very much indeed. Um, I think, Mark, we're going to do a roll call tonight, so uh, I'd be grateful if you'd like to go through that first. OK, thank you, Chair. Councillor Adams. Present. Councillor Bevan. Councillor Cushing. Councillor Ellsbury. I can see Councillor Ellsbury and I believe he's got mic problems, um, so I'll note that he, uh, Councillor Ellsbury, is present. Uh, Councillor Goff, we've had apologies from. Uh, Councillor Lindsay Hardin. Present. Councillor Higgs. Councillor Kirby. Present. Councillor Leonard. Present. Councillor Owen. Councillor Price. Present. Councillor Ridgewell. Present. <coughs> Councillor Williams. Present. And Councillor Zapatinsky. Present. Thank you, Chair. Can I confirm Mark with Quarry? Because there were quite a few numbers missing, weren't there? Uh, yes, we, we are quarts, Chair. There just needs to be a quarter of members. Okay, and that's fine. there is um, one, two, three, nine members, sir. That's great. Thanks very much indeed. Um, and moving to uh, agenda item two, which is the declarations of interest. But before I read out the declarations of interest, I I'm going to ask uh, Mark just to take us through uh, one of the issues which I think is quite important for all the members here tonight. So perhaps you could just explain the situation, please. Yeah, thank you, Chair. So uh, as members are aware, I, uh, agenda item seven, we'll be looking at a, a series of options for the charging of rent for council tenants. So if there is any com uh, committee member who is a council tenant, then that is a personal and prejudicial interest which should be declared. And um, you'd be asked to leave the meeting just for that particular item, item seven. Also, if you have a close personal associate who's a council tenant, that is also a, um, a, a personal and prejudicial interest. Um, so that should be declared. Thank you, Chair. Mark, can you just clarify the issue in connection with anybody who might be renting a council garage? Because I think that also might fall under this. Yes, that would also be a personal and prejudicial interest, uh, Chair, because um, recommendation point six uh, in the report, that is specifically for the um, rent for garages. 
Thanks very much indeed. OK, so um, councillors and officers are reminded of their personal responsibility to declare any personal and or prejudicial interests in respect of any item of business on this agenda on this agenda in accordance with the Local Government Act 2000, the council's constitution and the code of conduct for both councillors and officers. Bearing in mind what we've been advised, are there any declarations of interest this evening? Yeah. Can, I, can I have clarification? Oh, oh, go on, sorry, Lindsay. Go after you, Dave. No. Um, I think he, well, he, is, he lives up the park estate, but I, I, I'm sure that he, well, he does live in a council house, but I don't know whether it's his or of his council, but he is one of our council members on town council. So can I declare just to make myself safe an interest on that? Or do, don't I need to, Mark? So, Councillor Price, this is a friend of yours, is it, who's a council tenant? He's on town council with me. He's a yeah, colleague. That, 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 that's fine. That, that's not a, I'll note that, um, Councillor Price, but that isn't a personal and prejudicial, certainly not prejudici prejudicial, so that's, that's fine. But thanks for notifying us, Councillor Price. Okay. Okay. Lindsay, I've got uh, family members that are council tenants, Mark, so they're yeah. declared interest in that. OK, thank you, um, Councillor Hardin. Um, so, yeah, a, a close personal associate is, is, is defined as more than a passing acquaintance or a distant relative the member rarely sees. So uh, uh, is it uh, uh, who, who is it? Um, is, is it a brother, did you say, Councillor Hardin? Brother and there's a nephew as well, so. OK, and well, I do see in that case, that is a personal and prejudicial interest. So uh, if, if you could leave the meeting um, when we, we come to that part um, of, of the process, Councillor Hardin, and I'll get um, one of the clerks to ring you uh, on your mobile number to invite you to rejoin the meeting when we finish that part of the of tonight's uh, discussion. Okay. Thank you very much. I, I see Councillor Shane Cook has his hand up. Shane, are you? Uh... Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Chair. I've got a personal interest. My cousin rents a council property. I'm, I'm obviously not voting. I'm not getting the introduction to the agenda item, but I just thought I'd want to let you know. Yes, thank, thanks for that, uh, Councillor Cook. As you point out, you, you won't be voting tonight. I'll note that. But when it does come to Cabinet next Wednesday, you would have to uh, notify um, during the declarations of interest. Um, when yeah, it comes really to Cabinet. Yes. OK, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cook. Thank you, because uh, I'm, I'm, I'm having a bit of fun with my screen here. I can't see any more hands up. Mike, can you see anybody else at all? No, no more hands up, but I can confirm that uh, Councillor Bob Owen has just joined the meeting and he's apologised for being slightly late. OK, um, good to hear. have you here, Bob. Thank you very much indeed. OK, so um, Bob, did you pick up the, the declaration, declarations of interest? If you've just arrived, um, uh, have you any issues you want to raise with us? Uh, no, John, I'm OK. Nothing to declare. Great. OK, thanks very much indeed. OK, thank you. So moving on to uh, agenda item three, which is to um, approve and sign the following minutes of the Housing and Regeneration Scrutiny Committee held on the 30th of November 2021. Um, OK, so just going through this for accuracy. OK, uh, starting at page one. Page two, page three, uh, page four, and finally, page five. Um, are there any points of accuracy that anybody wants to note for us? Can't see any hands up on my screen. Nope. OK. Can I have someone to move the recommendation, please? I move, Jez Kirby. Thanks, Jez. Uh, do we have a seconder? A second, yeah. Councillor Williams. Thank you, Walter. OK. So shortly we'll be asked to vote using the forms um, process, which will appear on our screen shortly, OK? Should be there now, Chair. Thanks. Hiya, John. It's Philippa. Just to let you know that I will abstain because I was absent from the meeting, so I can't comment on the, if it was accurate or not. Fine, yeah. Thanks for letting us know. OK. okay.
Yeah, that's been carried, Chair. There's eight votes for, no votes against, and just the one abstention. Thanks, Mark. Thank you very much indeed, everybody. Okay. Uh, so now we're moving on to uh, agenda item four, which is consideration of any matter referred to this committee in accordance with the call-in procedure. Um, do we have any call-ins on, on this committee, Mark? Uh, no, Chair, nothing's been called in. Thanks very much indeed. Okay. Um, so moving on to agenda item five, which is the Housing and Regeneration Scrutiny Committee Forward Work Plan, and it's back over to you, Mark, to take us through it. Thank you. OK, thank you, Chair. Um, members are asked to consider the forward work programme alongside the Cabinet work programme as appended to the report and to suggest any changes. Um, the next meeting of your um, committee is on the 10th of February, which is a special next week. Um, there's three reports on on that agenda. Um, there is a slight error in the pack you've got with you um, because the Welsh Government lease scheme proposal is missing. Um, so uh, that that uh, will be amended. Um, so there is a Welsh Government lease scheme proposal to be added for the um, for the meeting next week. Um, apologies for for I don't know how that was missed, but um, some, somehow in the in the quirk of the system, it didn't go from one forward work programme to another, but that has been agreed by by committee previously. Um, so there's three reports next week and also another late edition on the 15th of March, which is the, the meeting after next week. So there's also um, a housing revenue account business plan has been added to the forward work programme, as you can see in your packs. Um, so if members are, are happy, I would like to seek approval to publish the Housing and Regeneration Scrutiny Committee forward work programme. Um, with the uh, minor alterations that I mentioned onto the Council's website. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, Mark. Do you want a show of hands on that particular request of yours? Uh, it will be a forms vote, Chair. OK, fine. Yeah, all right. All right, fine. Can I, can I move so that, Chair? Can you move that? Thank you. Do we have a seconder as well? Second, uh, Councillor Williams. Thank you, Walter. OK, fine. Just for complete clarity, Mark, so that, that issue that you've, you've brought up will, will come on the vote now, yes? Be included within the vote now? Yes, uh, yeah. that's right, yeah. OK, thank you very much. Yeah, that's been carried unanimously, Chair. Nine votes for, no votes against, and uh, no abstentions. Thank you, Mark. Thank, thank you, members. Um, which leads me to move on to agenda item six now, uh, which is to receive and consider the following cabinet reports. As you can see, they're in front of you there. Um, I'll, I'll read them out just quickly. Um, regional employability proposals for the 24th of November 2021, the COVID-19 economic recovery framework, which is the 8th of December 2021, the draft new bridge to risk a corridor, Lower Ebu and Sahawi Valley. Important that I mention that master plan 12th of January 2022 and the draft budget proposal for 2022-2023 joint scrutiny. And that was 19th of January 2022. Um, did any of these, were any of these brought forward, Mark? Uh, no, Chair, none of those cabinet reports have okay. been brought forward. Thanks very much indeed. OK. Which means we can move on to uh, agenda item seven. Agenda item seven is the housing revenue account charges for 2022-2023. And I'm going to hand over to Councillor Shane Cook to take us through the report. Thanks, Shane. I'll leave you now then. See you later. OK, fine. Thanks, Lindsay. Thank you, Chair and evening members. Uh, this report tonight is for members to consider and take a view on the increased council housing rent charges proposed prior to consideration from Cabinet on the 9th of February 2022. The charges focus on council house rents, but also includes garages and are intended to be effective for housing revenue account for the 2022-2023 financial year. Officers recommend to Cabinet a range of increases per property for consideration from April 2022 based on the options explained in the report at note 3.2. This report will be presented to Cabinet and will include any comments or recommendations from this committee and officers are in attendance tonight if members have any questions. Thank you, Chair. 
Thank you very much. Um, are there any officers going to speak to this report? Um, or uh, yes. can we go straight to questions? Yeah. If, if I may. Um, Thank you, Nick. Yes, Spur, please. Um, yes. Just a couple of minutes of your time. I think. Okay, it's, and welcome, um, welcome to the to this first meeting too. Indeed. Thank, thank you very much. Um, I think it's just worth raising a few points to just give a bit more context to this. The highlight from the paper and attempt not to um, duplicate a lot of what you've read, but I think it's really important to note to notice that um, Kafili rents are considered the third lowest across Wales, um, so they do represent a good affordable um, uh, rent. And if you look at previous increases that the council have had um, last year, the rents were increased at the maximum that was allowed, given the, given the situation with COVID at one and a half percent. But the previous year, they'd actually been increased by 2.7 percent. So it gives you kind of a, a, a scale of how things have gone. And if you look at the average increases from 2014 to 2020, it was actually three and a half percent increase. It would have been much higher if, if last year's increase um, wasn't so low. You look at the current business plan, our projection is somewhere between one and a half and two and a half percent increase with also an additional suggestion of a, of a two percent increase on, on material costs. We're obviously very conscious um, within the service that there's discussions ongoing about um, the council tax increases as well um, and need to be uh, aware of that when we're looking at our um, increase in any of our rent for our housing revenue account. But I do want to point out it is in the paper, so this is a slight reiteration, but it's an important thing to note that we do have immediate pressures on materials, um, inflation outstripping uh, anything. It's the highest level of inflation, I think, since the, the early 90s um, that we're experiencing at the moment. It, it, we don't have a good way of, of, of forecasting kind of bad debts or voids as we navigate through kind of the continued pandemic, um, but more longer term increased focus nationally and within Philly for building our own homes. Um, uh, obviously politically um, uh, supported and something that we want to do more on and an ambitious journey of decarbonisation of the stock with with more announcements on what the Welsh Quality Home Standard 2 is going to look like imminently this year does put additional pressures on everything that we do within the ring fenced HRA so it's just it's just it's recognising that. I think another thing I'd like to point out is that um, uh, along with being the third lowest um, rents across Wales our residents are protected to a degree as 75% are either partially or in full receipt of housing benefit to pay for to pay for rents and um, any DWP increase is only ever going to track the, the, the level of increase that we are permitted, which is the maximum of, of September's cost price inflation, which was 3.1%, which again is, is in the paper. Um, the other element that's in the paper I'd like to highlight too is that we are due to review our five year rent policy um, with Welsh Government um, and they've asked us to use a recognised affordability model to test the affordability of our rents and we're exploring um, the Joseph Roundtree living rent model which a number of other authorities, stock retaining authorities have looked at and as have our housing association colleagues um, and we, we are to review that fully. Um, but it looks at um, incomes and tracks a living rent model of incomes across the 24 output areas of, of the Philly. And I'm in first inspection, um, we compare very favourably and very affordably with that with that model. And there'll be more on that to come when we, we look at our, our five year rent policy. I think the last thing to, to reference is that um, clearly if there is any um, uh, delay in this increase, there would be a knock on impact to um, uh, our ability to raise our revenue as we have to give a, a two month notice period to, for that. So while I recognise that um, uh, going to the, the maximum uh, that uh, we're permitted by uh, government is, is probably not palatable, um, looking at the service for the short period of time that I've been here and the, 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 the varying challenges that we have to meet all those objectives um, an increase in our rents um, is um, credible, if to use that word, with all the other challenges that we have um, going forward. So um, I can happily try and answer any questions. I also have two colleagues, Leslie and Sandra, with us this evening to answer any other questions you might have. Sorry, John, you're on mute. Thanks, Thank Nick. You. Yeah. yeah. Um, before we before we open up um, the the debate, I think it's opportune just just to remind everybody of the work that we have done so far, and I'd very much like to congratulate the whole of the housing department 
for the successful completion of the WHQS program. Um, uh, it's been an enormous task. Uh, it, it's been achieved successfully, um, and not least of all in, in the last part of it in, in the teeth of the pandemic. Uh, and I'm sure uh, members here would, would like to share my congratulations with everybody. So, so thank you very much for that, everybody. Um, and um, I'll feed that back. Something you, something you weren't involved with personally, Nick, but I, but I know very well you've got a lot of experience in these areas. I'm going to take all the glory, John. I think you absolutely should. <laughs> so um, open the floor. Do we, ha do we have any, any questions? <laughs> Mike, yes. Councillor Adams, yeah. Um, firstly, yes, if, if I can uh, reiterate the comments that you just made regarding uh, the tremendous amount of work that the housing department and using some of the contractors uh, along the way to come up with a successful, I hope, conclusion to WHQS. I know as councillors, we've all had a couple of little hiccups along the way that we've had to get involved with to make sure that uh, our residents have been uh, well informed about how work would be going in their particular property along the way. And I think generally, as the, uh, the tenant survey um, results show, that we did a good job. And uh, they really appreciate that in the majority of cases. Some will always be a little bit okay with what happened to their neighbour, what happened to themselves. But I think we had a very, very good outcome from doing that work. So well done to all. Uh, and Nick, you now picking up the, the baton for how we keep all that, uh, that good work, that good feeling going. Um, yes, so looking at the recommendations that we, we've got in front of us, I think uh, there are a few things that we can do to both move forward and do the right thing, I hope, for the majority of our residents who are tenants. Um, and would you accept a proposal from me at this early stage, uh, Chair? I, I think, Mike, uh, let's make sure that we, we have an adequate debate on this, if that's all the same to you. Thank you. Um, okay. There may be a few questions. I, I certainly have a question to, myself. Uh, so to move, move the report on, uh, um, unless right. other officers are going to be adding to what Nick had just told us. Well, I personally have a couple of questions I wanted to raise, but there may be other questions uh, before we reach that stage. Uh, okay, are there any members here who would like yeah. to ask questions? All right. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, Nick. Do we have any questions? OK, um, the, the question I've got uh, is particularly specifically about the material costs. Um, as we're aware, there is, there is huge inflation going on now uh, and um, I, I mean, we've we reached a stage where I, I think we've got material costs at a level which just we haven't experienced before. Now, undoubtedly, this will have an impact on the work that, that we, we can do. I think my question perhaps is, um, do we have any indication of how long this is going to last, this, this particular this particular upward surge, or is it something that we just cannot really calculate? I don't know if you've got a view on that at all, Nick. Um, it's, it's something that's very difficult to calculate because it depends who, which contractor, which supplier, which organisation you speak to. I think in the paper it gives a, a, a huge range of from 8% uh, increase to 200% increase on some materials. I think there's been a huge steel shortage over recent years. There's been a concrete sort of shortage. Um, uh, we, we benefit from exploring other routes to kind of keep some of that um, uh, business within within Caerphilly and uh, it's been well versed about um, having a, a steel frame contract and that's actually within Caerphilly that we can use ourselves. We also benefit from uh, currently, which we'll need to be procure in due course, we benefit from a, a managed um, contract with Robert Price, which fixes some of the prices over the, over the over the course of that of that programme, which does protect us to a certain degree. But when we go out to other contractors and subcontractors, we're not immune to any of that inflationary increase, which is why it's referenced in the paper. We do a lot of Kind of benchmarking and discussion with our partners and we have a we have a, a an affordable housing partnership board of all our um rsl partners and we monitor their the issues that they have and, and they are not immune it is something that is a, we're experiencing across the piece so in any ways that we can get any cost efficiencies through through frameworks or buying clubs in the future we'll explore because um uh, we can't just be left hostage to paying whatever price there is there needs to be ways of looking at that so it's something that we continue to work on um, uh, and hope as we get through some of the, the pandemic um, uh, we can we will see some efficiencies. I think the other big issue to some of the costs is is labor 
as well in terms of an aging workforce. Um, a lot of a lot of the workforce were actually retiring, um, and then obviously the impact that Brexit had with some of the Eastern European workforce as well. Um, and there's a huge skills agenda, and so all that 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 amounts to um, increase in uh, labour costs as well as as well as materials. Um, so yeah, it's something that is hot on my agenda. It was before I joined Caffili. It will continue to be whilst I'm, I'm with Caffili. Thanks very much indeed. Um, if I just just one other question. I, I'm just wondering whether um, our our plan, our intentions uh, when we come to constructing council house property now is, is to use offsite construction, isn't it? And actually delivering almost, I suppose you might call modular modular uh, um, pieces of development or whatever you describe it as. I don't know what the right term is. Um, I'm just wondering whether there are any cost benefits that can be gained from that at this stage, or have you encompassed it in your answer? Perhaps you can just give me a brief feel for what it is. Yeah, I was, I was just touching on that briefly with the, with the um uh, the company that the name escapes me now that has an operation within Penalta Business Park actually that, that provides us the the steel frame that we've used on two um, demonstration sites um uh, recently um and with a view that we will look to we will look to use them again and that, that has um uh, some efficiencies um in terms of order book etc. Um, but the the use of modern methods of construction is something that the Welsh government are very strong on. Um, uh, there's an economies of scale point here, and I think there's something that we can look at across um, our other partners. We know that United Welsh have their own um, uh, modern methods of construction timber frame um, facility now called Celtic Horizons, and I'm uh, looking at what efficiencies that that brings them. But um, we'll be exploring all of these um, uh, areas for speed of delivery as much as anything, and that with that comes costs come down. Um, but if there's any efficiencies of of, of, of using um uh, that with with partners we, we absolutely will thanks very much nick okay uh, i mean it, it's encouraging that we're doing all we can i i think that's the the, the key point but we are i think you use the term hostage to fortune i mean th these things are way beyond anything that we can control uh, and the global markets are influencing us at the moment but um yeah, but I, 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 I would just iterate that the the, the 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 managed contract that we have with with Robert Price has really protected us from some of the some of the price increases that others may have experienced during the pandemic. It's been a it's um, I, I'm very glad that that was in place um, uh, for now, and we, we are looking to see how that um, evolves going forward when we reach the reach the the the, the term of that um, uh, contract. Okay, thanks very much indeed. Um, do we have any further questions from members at this stage? Uh, yes, please, Chair. Yeah, Councillor William. Yeah, far away. Okay, thank you. Uh, in the Nick, um, you mentioned yeah. about employees and, and uh, staff problems. How are we with uh, apprenticeships? Um, as much as I've been made aware in the last two months, very good actually. Um, in terms of bringing them bringing them in, um, uh, I forget the level. I don't want to misquote it, but it's in the teens in terms of the levels of apprenticeships that we do have within the um, technical side of the business. The operatives are coming through and working through and learning a trade. Um, uh, in actual fact, I was just speaking about um, my experience of apprenticeship programmes across across the service, actually, um, with, with, with our um, human resource colleagues earlier today. And I've got a few ideas about how we might look to bring some of that into the the, the Caffili Homes arena. But we're, we are bringing in apprentices on the from the operative side of things so the gas technicians, the, the carpenters, et cetera, and bringing them through and getting them to learn a trade. And that's been very successful and we'll continue to ex explore that as bringing them in. And then once they finish their apprenticeships, the, the the kind of succession is that they would they would be able to kind of take a take a role. Yeah. What I would say is um, uh, that we have been losing some some staff um, uh, uh, as others have been pulled away to, to work for our competitors or, or, or some of our RSL colleagues. And so that's something I'm definitely going to look at over the, over the coming months. OK, that's good news. Thanks very much. Thanks very much indeed. Uh, OK, thanks, Nick. I, I, you did mention Les and other officers that are here. Is there anybody else that wants to add anything before before we at this juncture from, from some of your team? I suspect not. <laughs> Excellent stuff. OK, fine. Right. OK, um, so so um, just bear with me a second, please. Thank you very much. Yeah, indeed. So um, we, we have with us some options um, th this evening to look at in terms of the percentage increase that we are we are going to be uh, considering. Uh, and it ranges from, I think, 3.1 percent um, down to 1.5 percent and in fact to, to, to zero percent. And each one of these clearly as the text says, it gives us 
varying degrees of of challenges challenges ahead. But surely we have to balance this off against the situation we're in now, the, the economic climate we're in, uh, and not least of all, the general level of inflation and cost increases that everybody is 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 suffering from at the moment, and not least of all, our, our housing tenants. So I, I wonder if at this stage, uh, Mike, we can come back to you again, uh, and, and you might have a proposal on, on this you'd like to put forward. Thank you, Chair, and, and, and thanks for outlining uh, as much as you were able to in that part of your presentation tonight, Nick. Uh, but we haven't yet moved the uh, report. Now, if uh, we finish with any questions or any other inputs from other officers. Apologies. Yes, you are absolutely right. I'm, I'm trying to desperately scroll up my screen here and get to the point where I should be. Bear with me a second or so. <clears throat> Chair, shall I offer some guidance at this stage? It would be helpful because I'm, I'm, as I say, having lost one of my screens, I'm struggling a bit to find my my, my place in, in the agenda. Yeah. OK, then, Chair. So as um, the Vice Chair was um, outlining there, um, there's a series of options available for members to vote on this evening between um, point one and five in the recommendations. So, Chair, with your agreement, I would suggest that we um, have someone to move and second one of those options and then we'll move to option um, six, um, which is referring directly to the garage, um, the, the rent for, for just garages. And then we could move to um, point seven, which is the review. Um, so if we can do the options first for rent, so if someone can move and second it and we'll we'll put, a, put that to the vote, if that's okay, Chair. And then we'll move to point six and then point seven. Thanks. Yeah, I have a complete clarity. So we'll, we'll vote on each one as, as 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 it comes to us. So yeah. So coming back to you, Mike, I I think you you had a had a proposal yes, in mind for this. I I was I was prepared actually to incorporate uh, all three, but it's probably best as uh, Mark has outlined to do each one and get that one out of the way and then move on and uh, to go through. So I I'm prepared it to three point two three. That's the two percent increase. Um, I know that's not going to give us the kind of money we would like because the issue of uh, material costing going forward is not going to be incorporated in just a 2% uh, increase for all the work that we may be expecting to do. But I'm prepared to move 2% increase on the rents. So we have a do we have a second for for, for yeah. um Jess Kirby, I second that. Thank you, Jess. Okay, right. Um Mark, um, we, 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 we have a proposal on the table now. Um, OK, and uh, I think that means we can put it to the vote, doesn't it, for this one? That's right, Chair. I'll do this via roll, roll call, if that's OK, because we've, be got, yeah, um, we've split this into three sections, as it were. So okay. if I can go down. Um, so this has been moved by Council Adams. It's the 2% increase, um, and this has been seconded by Councillor Kirby. So if I go down um, in alphabetical order and if uh, members could um, reply for, against and abstain. Um, if this falls, then obviously we can go to another option if there is uh, other options out there um, that members want to raise this evening. If not, then obviously this, then this will be the, the substantive um, decision. So Councillor Adams. Four. Councillor Bevan. Councillor Cushing. Councillor Ellsbury. Against. Councillor Goff. Councillor Higgs. Councillor Kirby. Four. Oh. Councillor Leonard. Councillor Leonard. Can you hear me? Yes, Councillor Leonard. Um, you, we're, we're voting on the um, yes. rent increase. Are you for, against or abstaining? Yes, I'm for. Sorry, it, it wasn't working for some reason. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Leonard. Yeah. Councillor Owen. Yeah, for. Councillor Price. For. Councillor Ridgewell. For. Councillor Williams. 
Or. And Councillor Zaplatinsky. Or. Thank you, Chair. So that's. That's been carried uh, eight votes for one vote against and no abstentions. Thank you very much. Um, moving on then to uh, uh, number six. Um, do, do we have a move for number six? Uh, just to remind you, that's the level of rent for garages from April 2022 to be increased to by two two percent. I move. Thanks, Jez, and a seconder. I'll second that. Councillor Adams. Thanks, Mike. OK, over to you again, Mark. <clears throat> OK, so this is for the um, garage, uh, council garages. Council Adams. Or. Councillor Bourbon. Councillor Cushing. Councillor Ellsbury. That's four. Councillor Golf. Councillor Kirby. Four. Councillor Leonard. Four. Councillor Owen. Four. Councillor Price. Four. Councillor Ridgewell. Four. Councillor Williams. Four. And Councillor Zaplatinsky. Four. That's been carried, Chair. Nine votes for, no votes against, and no abstentions. Thanks very much indeed. And finally, can we move on to point seven, uh, which is a recommend a review of the current rent policy to reflect affordability? Do we have a mover for that? I'll, I'll move that one again, uh, Chair. Thank Thanks, you, Mike. Jones. Seconded, um, Jess Kirby. Thank you, Jess. OK. And for the last time, over to you for. Uh, the roll call. Thank Thanks, you, Chair. <coughs> Councillor Adams. Four. Councillor Ellsbury. At four. Councillor Kirby. Four. Councillor Leonard. Four. Councillor Owen. Four. Councillor Price. Four. Councillor Ridgewell. Four. Councillor Williams. Four. And Councillor Zaplatinsky. Four. That's been carried, uh, Chair. Nine votes for, no votes against, and no abstentions. Thank you very much, and, th and thank you, members. Thank you, Mark. So uh, moving on to agenda item eight, which is Economy and Environment 2021-22, the budget monitoring report for period seven. And I'm going to ask Councillor Ellen Stenner to, to introduce the report. And I think Dave Roberts then is going to speak on the report as well. Ellen, it's over to you. Thank you, Chair. The report before us this evening summarises the most recent budget monitoring projections for 2021-22. This report informs members of projected revenue expenditure for the Economy and Environment Directorate for the 2021-22 financial year. The service divisions include Regeneration and Planning, Infrastructure Services Division, Public Protection Division and Community and Leisure Services Division. The recommendation is shown at 3.1 that members note the contents of this report and the detailed budget monitoring pages in respect of Regeneration and Planning Division, which is the only division that falls within the remit of this uh, the, uh, scrutiny committee. Thank you. Thanks very much, Ellen. Um, Dave, do you do you want to do you do you want to speak on this now? I've got nothing further to add. Only okay, to remind that's members that's that this that's is only for regeneration and planning section. Yep. Okay, that's fine. Thank you very much indeed. Okay, members. Um, so the debate is now open. Do we have any questions on this particular matter? None showing, Chair. Um, I, can I just ask 
think, uh, Dave, uh, th this is the uh, the performance report uh, that. Uh, we have at, for this scrutiny committee for that part of uh, the e economic uh, and regeneration uh, uh, directorate as a whole and uh, it's moving on from the one that uh, we received I think it was last month uh, when did we have the uh, item I'll remember uh, period six period is the word I was looking for period six Dave and has there been any material changes from from that one. I believe period six went to the last meeting, which was roughly six or eight weeks ago. Yeah. Um, there's no material movement overall from period five to this period seven report. Yeah. OK, thank you. Thank you, Dave. Uh, in looking at that. Uh, a few of them, I, I hadn't noticed anything that was really outstanding that we needed to ask about. Thank you, Chair. OK, thank you. If you're happy with that response. Uh, um, do we have any other hands up at this stage? Um, Mike, can Can't you help me with that? I see any others at this moment, uh, Chair. OK, fine. OK, well, the recommendations are set out on page 31 of the PACs. Um, members are requested to note the content of this report, uh, which we have done this evening. So, so thank you all very much indeed. Um, and uh, thank you, officers, and, and for, for the presentation which leads us now to move on to agenda item nine, which is the director, Directorate Performance Assessment six months update 2021 to 2022. And we have with us now cabinet member, Councillor Shane Cook to introduce the report. Can I leave it to you, Shane? <clears throat> yeah, thank you, Chair. This report is a six month Caffili Homes Performance Assessment, which is part of the Council's performance management framework. The performance assessment is a directorate self-assessment and forms part of the Council's overall self-assessment activity. It provides information and analysis for six-month period between April to September 2021. Members are invited to discuss challenges range of information. Thank you, Chair. Thanks very much indeed. Um, I don't know if, if officers want to add anything to that um, to, to supplement what uh, uh, Councillor Cook has said. Um, I know Fiona's here tonight. Is there anything you'd like to add at this stage? Um, only to mention, I, I think it's to emphasise that it is the first two quarters of the year. So at the time that this report has come to you, things have progressed and moved on quite considerably in some areas. It is based at a point in time for the end of September. Um, just a couple of points that pick up from the um, previous agenda items. In really, you queried about apprenticeships. Um, and as at the end of September, we had appointed nine new apprentices within this financial year. So that does evidence that um, we are having some success in recruiting apprentices. Retaining them is much more difficult, as, as Nick has already mentioned. Um, and also, I think a reference throughout this report, there is re mention um, of some of the issues that we have in relation to escalating costs, shortages of materials and contractors. So I think it's replicated across an awful a lot of services corporately now, but it, there are issues that are, we are picking up with that as well. But obviously open to any questions that uh, you have to put forward. Thanks, Fiona. I, I, I mean, you, you point out some of the some of the, the, the challenges that we face, but uh, I, I think it's fair to say there have been some successes as well, significant successes. And um, I believe there are some questions uh, uh, that members want to raise on this. Um, Mike, I think you were going to say something. Yes, yes, I got. Uh... What I hope it's a very challenging question because that's where asked, being asked to do is to challenge. Uh, can I just ask you, Fiona, what successes have we had in supporting residents, help people manage their accommodation and help people with their money as well? Because I've read little bits about uh, some of the successes we've had, but for the main, many people will be looking for how best do I manage my money my income uh, and even benefits so that I'm getting all I can for myself and my family. Um, I would consider we've been doing an, an awful lot to support tenants, particularly now. I know Sandra has got a, her hand up, who's our rents and support manager, and I know she'd like to speak on it because her team has become a leading light within uh, this area of work. So I'm sure Sandra will uh, like to respond. Thank Thanks, you. Sandra. Please share share it with us. <laughs> All I would say is the ten year anniversary 
of the creation of our support team in housing this year with the implementation of the Welfare Reform Act. Um, the team was created and um, supported by the council to ensure that our tenants received the right support at the right time. So we're not a new team, we're well established. We're used to dealing with tenants and supporting our tenants. And, you know, we, things are thrown at us, they're thrown at our tenants, but I'm proud to say, you know, the report refers to two point million, two million pounds additional income. It's not all about income. It's about the difference that makes to people's lives. The number of thank you cards, the number of quotes we receive from tenants to say what a difference that is made to their lives. I am proud of our team, as I've mentioned to councillors before, and I, I never underestimate, it never ceases to amaze me the real difference the team is making. But I think the two things that are important for me is that we're well established. Caffili Council invested in our team 10 years ago. We are well established. We are, um, our staff are trained very well. And, you know, pleasingly, the, the further investment in Caffili Cares with the additional staff, so it allows us to support people um, through all residents, through all tenures. And, you know, the, the winter fuel scheme this recently been um, implemented, you know, we're ringing and, and helping our tenants complete that and get an additional income for them at the same time. So I am proud of our service and proud of the investment that's been made in our service. Thank you. Thanks, Sandra. I, I, and I, I, you touched on that. I mean, it, it isn't just a responsive service, a proactive service, isn't it? And I think that's quite critical. Uh, and I think we all share in, in the pride that you, you've talked about here. It, it is something that has been a huge success. And, and more importantly, it's something that actually has changed people's lives, you know, and, and during this most difficult period that we're going through now, I, I, you just cannot underestimate that. So, 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 so thanks for that summary. Thanks very much indeed. Um, uh, you happy with that answer, Mike? Can I just, uh, it's a fantastic answer, and it's a question I wanted to ask because at other meetings I've attended, I, I've heard similar comments about the work the team is doing for so many people to make their lives on a week to week basis easier. Easier for them to know that there's a little bit more income coming from a source they didn't realize they could have uh, actioned themselves, and the fact that the confidence it then gives them to be able to face up to the week after and the week after that, that things will be easier and they could start then to plan for how they use this any extra income rather than just go from day to day from, from too, far too many uh, of our residents. So thank you again to all of the staff who are picking up the phone and actually making phone calls as well to people who they know need that bit of encouragement. And this is how you can get in touch with another organisation that really will owe you money. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks, you very much. Thank you, Sandra. OK, um, uh, next on my list is, is Jez Kirby. Jez. <coughs> Thank you, Chair. Um, my question is about Caffili Keys, and I I'd like to ask how successful has Caffili Keys been in providing affordable private rented accommodation for people who can't get social housing? It's increasingly, so, sorry, it is in, okay. increasingly successful. It's been running a number of years now. It started very small as a pilot exercise. It was quite initiative, um, innovative within Wales. Um, we came up with an idea and, and ran with it. We've actually supported now 91 households as of the end of September into accommodation through Caffili Keys. We've got around, I think it's 43 landlords that we are partnering with at the moment. Um, I, think it, I think it's quite a few more than that actually now that we're on the scheme. It's been, yeah. been increasing since then. <coughs> um, we work with new landlords and existing landlords. A lot of them will only have perhaps one 
property. Some of them have become accidental landlords through inheriting properties in the past, for example. And the additional support and reassurance that we give them um, actually enables them to continue providing private rental properties in the market. So we see it as a vital element in homeless prevention. We're always encouraging new landlords in. We ensure that they have all the necessary um, requirements. We link in with Rent Smart Wales. We carry out property inspections to ensure that they are suitable properties for use. And we have sustained long term tenancies. We've got tenants that have been in those properties from the time that the scheme has started. So it demonstrates to landlords that we are able to provide tenants who can provide a sustainable um, tenancy and income for them. So we believe that it is, it's working very well at the moment. Always room to expand and for improvement. We're pulling in new landlords all the time and seeing what assistance we can offer, but it is going very well at the moment. That's great. That's a really good news answer. Thank you very much. Fiona. Yeah, thanks, Fiona. Nick, do you, want, do you want to add something to that? I just want to add very quickly that um, uh, the Special Scrutiny Committee, we're, there's a paper that talks to the, the successes of Kifili Keys on the 10th, so we'll have opportunity to debate that further then, but um, just echo what um, uh, Fiona mentioned, and um, I've been very, very pleasantly um, surprised about the success of it and the way that it's been done and the way that it's done on the relationships and managing those relationships and the trust that those private landlords have shown within the, within the scheme and the launch of the dedicated website has been, has been really, 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 really well, well welcomed. So we'll get an opportunity to debate it even further um, on the 10th. Excellent. Thanks so much Thank indeed. You. Thank you. Um, OK. Um, I've got uh, Philippa, Philippa Leonard, you're, you're next on my list. <clears throat> Is the mute button working now or not? Yeah, sorry, sorry, Chase, somebody just knocked my door. <laughs> uh, thanks very much. Yeah, I would like to ask a question. Um, with the increase in energy prices, can you please tell me what are the council doing to target landlords who are not complying with the minimum energy efficiency standard regulations. Thanks. Yeah, we've, yeah I can yeah. answer to that Coffee and we'll it, yeah. give you some information. We have actually applied and were successful in entering a competition for grant funding to um, recruit staff to work with uh, landlords to comply with the minimum energy efficiency regulation standards. We're doing that um, at the moment is encouraging landlords to improve their properties. We've actually been identifying which properties we have um, within the county borough that don't meet the standards. So any properties that are, are EPC, F and G, we are working with them to try and improve their properties to access funding to do so. and. Um, we are then also looking at the possibility of enforcement options. We intend taking forward a proposal for fixed penalty notices for landlords who are not complying. So that's a proposal that's actually going through the forward work programme. But the grant funding is available to us until the end of March. There is a possibility that it may be extended a little bit longer. So we're making maximum use of those two members of staff while we can. Uh, and we're also working with the EcoFlex project, which is um, a partnership arrangement with a local energy company to actually support um, residents within the borough to obtain energy efficiency improvements. So we the, the MEES project, as we have termed it, is, is actually working quite well at the moment. Um, and we will provide additional information when we go forward with the fixed penalty notice proposals. Fantastic. Thank you. Brilliant. Nick, would you like to add something at this stage? Just very quickly, there's also some um, Cardiff City Region, um, wider Cardiff City Region work that's ongoing with all the authorities that link into the Cardiff City Region. And I've been invited to a, to a meeting very soon about how we take that EcoFlex proposal beyond um, April um, this year. So um, we'll be able to bring some more back when we when we bring that forward in for the forward work plan that Fiona, Fiona mentioned. Thank you. Really positive. Thank you. If I may then, so, so, so what's the mood, mood music then in terms of, of continued funding for this? Because I mean, clearly it is something that, that's really doing doing good, you know, as far as we're concerned. Anyone able to answer that? The, the MIS regulation grant funding was fixed term. It was a six month 
provision. Obviously, um, the, the staff, we will keep for as long as we are able to with the funding that's available. Welsh Government are continuing looking at energy efficiency and climate change measures um, for private landlords and other residents throughout the borough. So what we've got to do is keep aware to the opportunities that are available to us and try and find resources to be able to continue those programmes and expand them. So there may be additional funding coming in or there will be over, over time for uh, different projects, but the MIS funding grant that we have will be coming to an end. Even if it's not by the end of March, it's not going to run into the whole of 22-23. OK, it'd be nice uh, to think, though, wouldn't it, that the, ro the rollout that we've done, the successful rollout that you've done, um, encourages those that make these decisions to, to continue supporting something along those lines. I think that that's that's the message we would like to send back. Um, but thanks very much indeed. Was there anybody else that wanted to add anything to this? Do you want to say anything else, Nick, well, before we finish this one? No, it's fine. No. OK, OK, fine. Um, thanks very much indeed. Um, Walter, I, I've got you with your hand up. You've been very patient. Yes, thank you, Chair. Uh, the question I have is, um, what progress are we having with the two council first two new builds developments in Trikenneth and to Thomas, please. Do you want me to answer that one quickly, Fiona? You can add. You can add if I miss anything. Well, it's a very quick update. We're great progress has been made. I think they're both due to be completed um, early summer, maybe June time. Um, one of the first things I did was go outside and have a look at them. I'm very impressed with some of the technology that's been used there. They're all going to be delivered to the passive house standard, um, which if you if you know is where um, the, it it. it it generates as much energy as it uses, so it's kind of neutral. So it'll be a carbon neutral, carbon neutral scheme. It has um, various technology that we'll be looking to ex ex use across other new build developments um, that we that we have in the in the council going forward. And it's kind of like our pilot sites um, to to review some of this technology. There's a a lot of work I know that we need to do in terms of education and communication about how re residents and tenants kind of use the home and how the technology uh, uh, is, is operated within the home. There's obviously a lot of, a lot of um, education around how we maintain the units because it's a different technology, but it's really great to come into the council to find that we have these pilot projects because it's exactly what we should be doing in terms of our education going forward because this is the work this is where the future lies as i mentioned earlier the welsh quality housing standard 2 agenda will be heavy on decarbonisation and how that we need to decarbonise our all new build all of our stock you'll be aware that no new gas boilers are allowed in in in, in new build properties from get the date now 23 i think as early as that um and so these two pilot projects it's it's excellent to see them coming out the ground and we're forgetting it's brand new kafili homes stock for us for the future um uh, not just the, the kind of demonstration qualities that it has so um it was great to see them um, we want Dixon, our partner, have done a really good job there uh, in, in building them, and a lot of that technology will be used um, hopefully uh, in the future. I don't know if there's anything else you want to add, Fiona. Um, no, as, as you say, it's it's up, upskilling our staff, our repairs <coughs> side, our management team. The properties will have to be managed in a different way. We need to engage with tenants to ensure that they get the benefits of these properties and, and, and maximise the opportunities. And these are obviously only the first of what we anticipate will be, be many. So those principles need to be taken forward so that we can look at uh, the opportunities that are with us for the future as well. OK, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you thanks, both. Thanks, thanks, Walter. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I, I, I think it's often it's easy to overlook the upskilling that we have from that, the, the huge benefits that come out of that that you don't necessarily think of. You know, we, we will have staff with these experiences to, to lead on these things in the future, which, which is just superb. Um, Perhaps somebody can tell me how I, I retrofit a, a ground source heat pump as well. That'll be handy because uh, I think I'm going to need that in a little while. But um, yeah. thanks for when mentioning. You've got a spare hour. Actually, oh, that's chair, <laughs> that was a, just not tonight. About retrofitting, and I was going to very quickly come in before Diane, if she'll excuse me, uh, to ask: Are any of the new technologies that we're talking about to, for passive homes easily available to be retrofitted in? some of the houses we got uh, fairly new built or is it just too much disruption it, it 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 depends on the on the stock age and ability to to look at that i was speaking to our technical team uh, this week and there are some very old properties that actually are 
powered on on Cala steel that we're actually putting in um, uh, air source heat pumps and even ground source heat pumps because it's the right technology for them. Um, but it will depend on the on the on the on the age and um, condition of the stock to be to be fair in terms of whether they can be retrofitted with that technology. There's obviously other technology that can be can be retrofitted, and as, as I've said a third time, but. When we hear the Welsh Quality Home Standard 2 decarbonisation agenda, it could be a lot of other um, tech that could be retrofitted, like photovoltaics on the roof and, and, and things like that, that people will be very aware of. So we'll wait and see on that on that basis. But there's a lot of work that we have been doing on, on, on decarbonisation just behind the scenes because it's the necessary technology for some of that stock. Right. Thanks, Nick. Sorry, Diane, for dump, jumping in front of you there. No problem. Off you go, Diane. Oh, you that's like very that. kind. Thank you, lovely. That's all I got to say is thank you all very much because you were wonderful officers in housing as far as I'm concerned, because I think housing is one of the hardest departments because um, the complaints that I get, I shouldn't say that mine, should I? But the <laughs> complaints I get is mostly housing. But it's sorted. You've only got to, you know, ring through and... And it is sorted, and I'm so, so grateful to you all. Keep smiling, Nick, and Fiona, thank you, Pat. I will. Uh, thank you, Dar. Yeah, and I, I, I mentioned you. this before, I know, but Maslow's hierarchy of needs, which we all know from training days, um, housing is very critical, isn't it? So so thank you very much. Are there any other, other, other questions tonight for officers? OK, so... Um, the recommendations uh, are set out on page 45 of your packs. Um, uh, as you know, Chair, we, we, I don't we, know whether we, Philip Leonard's. Oh, no, it's gone off again now. That's OK. I didn't know whether it'd come back up I, with the question. Now you can take your hand down. Yeah, I, I did have a hand. question, but I thought I'd missed the boat. Uh, by all Never means, miss the boat, Cliff. <laughs> very relaxed here. Bring your question up, please. Yeah. Thank you. It's just a quick one oh. for Fiona. Fiona, um, a few meetings ago, going back a few months now, you mentioned that surgeries, housing, we're going to be holding surgeries to give information to to local people, or uh, you know, with help and advice. Can you tell me where you are with the with with sorting those out, and and you know, when can we see those up and running? Because they they're we, going to be brilliant. I I really think they'll help tremendously. Thank you. Yeah, we have started a number of surgeries. They are appointment only at the moment because of the COVID restrictions um, and the, the need to, to limit access to them. What we would like to do is ensure that we get a range of surgeries across the borough before we promote them and, and advise members in relation to them. But we are moving forward. Sandra's team, I don't expect Sandra will want to comment, is actually um, supporting the surgery provision. And we are looking at surgeries for tenancy, support and sustainment and housing management surgeries. Sandra, I don't know if you want to give a bit more information. Yeah, you know, prior to this latest wave, we were held, holding the surgeries um, in Risca. We worked in partnership in the Channel View um, yes, Centre yeah. with the RVC, developed, yeah. you know, developing a good relationship. And obviously, um, when, um, when we can, our aim is to get back up into the surgeries that we have there at the moment appointment only and um obviously to to roll out to, to other venues but you know we have got a very robust um home working model at the moment in which we can support our our tenants and residents with conference calling with the dwp um so you know we haven't held still we've looked at innovative ways of working and you know we have progressed quite well but we do believe, you know, we need to get out into our communities, Councillor Leonard. And, you know, prior to said the last wave, we were um, in, I think, about seven venues. But our, our medium to short to medium term is to increase the number of venues that we can um, go to with our staff. Thank you. Oh, great. Uh, when that's up and running, that'll be, that'll, well, that would be brilliant. It's such a good service to offer the public. Thank you. Are you happy with that then? Thank you, Philippa. Yeah. OK. Thank you. OK, so as I was saying, the recommendation is set out on page 45 of your packs. And, and we have, I think, uh, reviewed, discussed and reviewed this and had some some very interesting answers. Um, 
So um, we've actually completed what we need to do and um, we ha have done what we're supposed to do this evening. So thanks very much indeed. And I can now move on to agenda item 10. Agenda item 10 is the Director of Performance Assessment for Economy and Environment Services, the six months update 2021-2022. And we have Councillor Eleanor Stenner here to introduce the report yet again. Thank you, Leonard. <clears throat> Thank you once again, Chair. This report is presented to scrutiny for members to discuss the six month economy and environment directorate performance assessment report, which is part of the Council's performance management framework. The performance assessment forms part of the Council's overall self assessment activity. This scrutiny meeting is asked to focus on the planning and regeneration service aspects of the DPA and the recommendation is shown at 4.1 of the report. Thank you. Thank you very much, Leonard. Um, I think Mark, did you want to speak to this report? Uh, I, I was just, Leonard has just uh, in the main covered it, Councillor Ridgewell. I just wanted to remind members that obviously this is a, it's a bit of a tricky one in that obviously the directorate is, is quite wide ranging in its services. Most of those are within the remit of the Environment and Sustainability Scrutiny Committee, but planning and regen, as Councillor Stenner said, um, are for discuss is for discussion tonight. The remainder of the services will be the subject of the Environment and Scrutiny Committee uh, meeting next week. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Yeah, there, there is an overlap which, which does sometimes present us with, 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 with a few issues, um, but, but I think there may be some questions that have tumbled out of this. Um, uh, Do we have any questions at this point? My recollection is that Walter, you wanted to ask a question. Yes, please, Chair. Thanks very much. Um, on page 70, you have an explanation of the, the color coding. You've got black, red, amber, green. This says on the black, it's not yet started or too early to report any progress. Then on 72, regarding, if you can just bring it up, to undertake a formal review of the community centre management network to support a more sustainable and efficient delivery model. And that's all black. I, mean, I think we supposed to have a completion date on April the 22nd. Um, why is this taking so long? Or, I mean, the last formal review it said if I can just uh, make my page a bit smaller. The last formal review was 2014, was it? There seems to be taking the time to to get this report together. Uh, yeah, if I can come in, Chair. Yes, Please. Councillor Williams, there's, there's been a couple of attempts at reviewing community centre provision. Let me just put community centres in context for you. There are, um, I think it's 52 in the county borough. The authority does not support all of those. Um, so the there is there is a, a difference in the level of support in different parts of the borough. As I said, my, a couple of my predecessors have attempted to bring reviews forward. Um, those reviews um, have, did not progress. Um, they was they were stalled by um, members at the time. Obviously, this review has some links to some of the service reviews being undertaken as part of the Team Caffili Program Board, things like walk-in services. Um, uh, what's the other one? Uh, there's decision-making, walk-in services, um, and you know, so, sort of looking at the buildings we operate and what we operate from. Um, those uh, reviews are not yet found their way into into scrutiny cabinet arena and this really links with them jeff reynolds who is the service manager responsible community centers is part of that walk-in services review so the two are the two are linked so that's one of the reasons for the delay okay thanks so much thank you happy with that walter thank you okay yeah, thank you. Do, do we have any other questions on this particular matter none showing chair OK, thank you very much. OK, thank you for that, Mark. OK, so um, the, the recommendations uh, on this report are on page 64 of your packs, and, and we have uh, reviewed the attached document and, and had a discussion on it. So um, we're now at the stage where we have done really what we should have done this evening. Um, so, so thank you all very much with regard to, to that 
particular agenda item. Um, that is agenda item 10 and it leaves us to the end of the meeting. So um, thank you all very much indeed for, for your attendance tonight. Um, I, I trust that, that Nick enjoyed his first meeting. We certainly enjoyed meeting here, here tonight. And um, thank you all very much and a good night, everybody. Thanks, man. Good evening.